Hello everyone, this is Mr. Mahmood here. Today's lesson is on volume of cylinders. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to calculate or find the volume of cylinders. This is a very common question in GCSE maths exam, both AQA or OCR or even Edexcel GCSE maths exam. This video comes in three parts. First of all, we will look at the formula Secondly, I will go through some examples, so make sure you make notes. And finally, you will have the opportunity to have a go at some practice questions. And of course, I will give the answer at the end so that you can check whether you got them right or not. Now, prior to this lesson, I will highly recommend you to check out these following videos because you will need the prior knowledge in order to completely understand this lesson. So these lessons are area of circles, volume of prisms and rounding numbers to one decimal place or significant figures. You will find the links to these videos in the description or in the comment section. So let's have a look at the formula. Now we know from the volume of prisms video, we multiply the cross-sectional area by the length. Now, in this question, the cross-sectional area is a circle on this cylinder. Now, we know to work out the circular area, we use the formula pi r squared. Now, in order to work out the circular area, you will need the radius. And if you've been given the diameter, we need to half the radius. Now, we need to multiply by the length. Now we can call it length or call it height because the cylinder we can just call it height. So the volume of cylinder is equal to pi r squared times by the height. So we can just quickly simplify that. So pi r squared h. And using this formula we can work out the volume of cylinder. Let's have a look at the example one. Make sure you have a pen and paper ready and you are making notes of these examples. First of all, let's write down the formula. So volume equals pi r squared h. Let's identify what is given on this cylinder. So we can see we have a radius and we also have a height. So we've got everything that we need to work out the volume of this cylinder. Now let's go ahead and plug in the information. So let's write pi times by radius is three. So 3 squared, and the height is 10. Now, in your exam, if it's a non-calculator exam, they might ask you to write down your answer in terms of pi. Or if it's a calculator paper, they might ask you to round your answer to decimal places or significant figures. We are going to do both. So we're going to leave it as pi first, and then round our answer to decimal places or significant figures. If the question is asking you to leave it in terms of pi, let's solve this bit. So 3 squared is 9, 9 times 10 is 90. So the answer will be in terms of pi, 90 pi. Now if you type this in your calculator, we can work out the decimal answer. So what we need to do is 90 times by pi, and that will give us the answer 282.74333. Leave it up to here. Now we can see we've got quite a few decimals there. Now, if the question asks you to round it to say three significant figures, then that means we need one, two, three, and look at the number after the third number after the decimal is five or over, which is seven, that means we need to add one to this number here. So our rounded answer to three significant figures is going to be 283 centimeters cubed. Now, if this question asks us to round it to two decimal places, then look at the two numbers after the decimal, which is seven and four. Look at the third number after the decimal, which is a three, which is four or less. We don't need to add a number to the four. So we'll leave it as it is. So that will give us 282.74 centimeters cubed. Now, if it's a calculated paper and you're asking you to write down the answer in significant figure or decimal places, you can just type in 
all of this calculation inside the calculator. Now you might need to press the SD button if you're using a cal uh, Casio calculator for this question to get to the decimal answer. Otherwise it might give you in terms of pi. Next example. In this example we can see we have been given the diameter which is 8 centimeters and we have the height as well. So let's go ahead and work out the volume. And before you work out the volume, we need to work out the radius. So the radius is going to be half of the diameter, which is eight divided by two, which is four centimeters. Write down the formula. So pi r squared h. So pi times radius is four. So it would be 4 squared times by height, which is 9. Let's type all this in our calculator. Now if you want the pi, just leave it as pi, then you can just work out 4 squared times by 9. So let's go ahead, 4 squared, which is 16, times by 9. That gives us 144. So we can write it as 144 pi. Now if you want the decimal answer, you can just type in all of this in your calculator and that gives us an answer of 452.38 so volume is equal to 452.3893 don't forget to put the units centimeters cubed let's round it to say three significant figures again so 452, look at the number after the third significant figure is 4 or less, so we leave it as 452 centimeters cube. Or we can round it to decimal places, two decimal places, two numbers after the decimal. This number is 5 or over, so we need to add 1 to this 8. That will give us 452.39 centimeters cubed. And that's the answer. Now it's time for you to have a go at some questions. Pause the video and have a go at these questions. And then play the video once you're finished for the answers. Okay, I hope you found these okay. And here are the answers. Can you make sure you check that you have all the working? So the calculation. And then if you rounded your answer, well, if you left it in pi, you should have 60 pi centimeters cubed. And then if you round it to three significant figures, this is your answer. Okay, in this question, I did not round it to decimal places, just left it as pi. So you need the calculation, your pi answer. Well, this is not very much of a pi because it gives you decimal as well. And the last bit is rounded to three significant figure. Okay, and these are your answers. Now the next video is going to be on finding radius and the height of a cylinder by rearranging the formula. Now if this video helped you, don't forget to give it a like, share it with your friends, and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. You can also visit my website if you want to access some of these PowerPoints. And also if you want to have a go at the quiz once you finish this, or if you want some past paper questions, then head over to my website, mrmahmood.co.uk.